Welcome back everyone, this will be my Joker 2 teaser video, they just dropped a brand new teaser trailer and a release date for Joker 2 confirming that Lady Gaga is going to be playing a version of Harley Quinn during the movie. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos, of course I'll do more videos when they release more footage for the film. Of course everyone's asking about the big Warner Brothers HBO Max announcement, I will address that later in the video too. Like this is relatively insulated from what's happening with HBO Max because it's like a completely separate thing, completely separate continuity, like it's not even tied to the Matt Reeves Batman continuity that he's setting up, which itself is kind of like this own separate universe. But recently you probably saw on your feeds Todd Phillips dropped a teaser for Joker 2 with Joaquin Phoenix like the movie is real, it actually exists now and they'll get ready to shoot it really soon. There was a title reveal and the full script like it's basically good to go because they're getting ready to film it. The title is pronounced Joker Foily Adieu, and it's French for Joker Shared Madness, as in Joker Shared Psychotic Episode. It's a term in psychology used to describe when multiple people share the same delusion, the same psychotic episode. In the context of the movie, it has multiple meanings, it's about how the Joaquin Phoenix Arthur Joker character has this sort of madness delusion about the world living in Gotham City, this delusion about being Thomas Wayne's illegitimate son. This also confirms now that the title, Shared Delusion, so to speak, refers to the shared delusion that Joker will share with Dr. Harleen Quinzel during his stay at Arkham Asylum. There are a lot of reports that say that most of the movie will take place in and around Arkham Asylum, so it'll deal with the development of their relationship, like how he meets her for the first time, how she eventually falls in love with him, and eventually he winds up twisting her to the dark side, so to speak. They've kind of addressed that in previous Batman projects, like they did a little bit during the previous Suicide Squad movies with the Margot Robbie version of Harley Quinn. We saw a little bit of her origin story as Harley Quinn. It sounds like a lot of this movie is just going to be a much bigger version of that, also because it's still going to be relatively low budget, it makes sense that they would keep a lot of it in and around Arkham Asylum. It'll be really interesting to see what she looks like compared to the Margot Robbie version of Harley Quinn. I had to cut out a little bit of the music from the teaser trailer just for copyright reasons, but this is what the actual audio sounds like on it. It's playing that classic song, I'm in Heaven, which is just meant to reference the context of their relationship, like this is happening in Arkham Asylum, like it's a reference to the fantasy that is taking place in his head, you're never quite sure if what's happening is really happening or if it's just happening inside his head. And now, obviously, because it's a shared delusion, is it happening inside her head as well? And it also means that through his actions, the crimes he pulls off during the sequel on the scale that he does, that he's going to cause the rest of the city that we saw towards the end of the first movie to share in his madness, metaphorically and literally. Because we are talking about the Joker here. Like in some Batman stories, the comics, the animated series, the TV shows, the movies, all the different versions, you see Joker try to dose the city with his Joker serum, the laughing serum. In the context of Arthur's Joker character in the first movie, it was more of a metaphorical thing because the crowd was already in the middle of rioting because of the current state of Gotham City and this big class divide and what was going on with the mayoral race and Thomas Wayne's run for mayor. The fun fact about the Joker serum too is that it's actually derived from the Scarecrow fear toxin, but we haven't had the Scarecrow inside the Joaquin Phoenix Joker universe yet. And even though it is possible that he could use some version of the Joker serum during this Joker sequel, I don't think they're going to play it that way, I think they'll keep it in the realm of metaphor when he talks about sharing his madness with everyone. Like through his actions, through the media, people will watch it, like the people who are writing, and it'll just get crazier and crazier and crazier, and he'll start to win them over through his actions. And they will then begin to share in his madness. It's not like he's going to go around dumping a bunch of fear toxin or Joker toxin into the water supply. That's the really cool, the really insidious thing about the first Joker movie is that he doesn't need any kind of Joker toxin like that, it's all about the role of the media and all this. Like in the case of the first movie, it was his broadcast at the end that helped push his exploits to legendary status, but at the time, he was already building on an existing system of riots that all the people in Gotham had been upset about, the current administration, the growing problems in the city. The whole inequality between the common people who were rioting and the ultra-rich people represented by Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's family. He was in the middle of running for mayor and there were these escalating series of riots throughout the movie as things got crazier and crazier and crazier, public outcries during his appearances. Eventually before he went full Joker at the end of the movie, he called the crowd a bunch of clowns. So already things were going really crazy in the city and what was happening with the Joker just kind of tipped that over the edge. The whole thing with him secretly being Thomas Wayne's son I think was actually a bit of a misdirect, but the way the movie plays it, they want to be kind of ambiguous about it because you're meant to be viewing everything in the film from Arthur's perspective. 
So as he descends into madness, you're meant to see things get crazier and weirder and weirder. Like they wanted you to feel as if there might have been a possibility that he was Thomas Wayne's son and they never confirmed that it wasn't true, even though they implied that it was all just this big delusion. In reality, I think that his mother had suffered from mental delusions like he does in the movie, like she had had mental episodes when she was younger, and she just fell in love with Thomas Wayne when her family was working at his mansion and started to get creepy at his house, and then they just implied that his family kind of pushed her family out the door. Like, okay, you go off on your own, no more working for us. And she just descended into a form of madness and just came up with this delusion that she had been in a relationship with Thomas Wayne, when that really wasn't the case. So he's not really Thomas Wayne's son, but during the movie, you notice, even after Thomas Wayne yells at him and they have that episode together, that big encounter, he calls him a crazy person, Arthur does not stop believing that it's true. He's still obsessed with the Waynes. So the idea is that he had played a party clown and Thomas Wayne had called the people like him, like the lower class people, a bunch of clowns acting crazy. He started to feel like his life was a joke. Eventually, he just kind of owns all that by wearing the name as his own mantle, calling himself the Joker. Matt Reeves actually had his version of the Barry Keoghan Joker in the Batman movie kind of say something similar, like it's not so bad being a clown. The big difference during the Batman movie, though, is the ages of the Batman and the Joker, and the Joker is in prison in Arkham Asylum because Batman put him there. They released a deleted scene that was meant to be on the one-year anniversary of him putting him in prison, so the Barry Keoghan Joker was joking about that with him, like, isn't it our anniversary? Fresh. So if it wasn't clear, now obviously Matt Reeves has confirmed that the Joker in his universe is not going to be the Joaquin Phoenix version of the Joker. And even though they are doing all this crazy multiverse stuff with the Flash movie, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie will still be set in an alternate universe. It's still going to be rated R, it's still going to be part of DC's Black Label, which is what they're using for their darker, more hardcore films, especially ones that are set in alternate universes that aren't necessarily connected to all the big DCEU stuff. Most of the plot details are being kept in an underground bunker, as you would expect, but based on what both Phillips and Phoenix had said previously, the movie isn't going to have like a massive time jump. The original movie took place during 1981. Joaquin Phoenix is in his 50s in present day in real world, but he was playing a 30, 40 something Joker. So any references to Batman or any of the other pre-existing DC characters in the Joker sequel is just meant to be a coincidence or in the case of this version of Batman, just a totally new different version of Batman. The Joker sequel is mostly just meant to move forward a little in the timeline to the next logical event in Gotham. So Bruce Wayne would still be a child living with Alfred. He'd be a little bit older, but still be a child. And there wouldn't be a bunch of Batman stuff happening yet. The other really big change that you probably just heard about that I mentioned earlier was Todd Phillips separately being asked by the new powers that be at DC at Warner Brothers to come in and advise on doing more films, kind of like the Joker in the same vein, like talking about more DC black label types of movies. That means more mid-budget movies, like movies that are closer to like 90, 100 million dollars about villain characters. Different from what you would think of your traditional big superhero type of DC film, like a Batman movie. Matt Reeves has talked about doing lots of spin-offs for his characters, like there's the Arkham Asylum TV show, there's the other Batman-based TV shows on the Robert Pattinson version of Batman. That's not meant to be DC Black Label stuff. All the stuff that Todd Phillips would be doing or helping advise or producing at Warner Brothers if other directors come on to do them is meant to be a different line of continuity. So Todd Phillips would probably swerve on doing a Black Label Riddler film, but there's many, many other villains in the DC toy box that they could do. Personally, I actually think that's been one of DC's strengths. They just announced that Marvel is finally doing a Thunderbolts movie, and they said that they pitched it kind of like the Marvel version of a Suicide Squad film. One of DC's big advantages over Marvel the past couple years has been their willingness to do R-rated villain-based films. This also kind of gets into what's going on with the bloodbath that was happening at HBO Max recently with all the cancellations of TV shows and movies. What they were mostly canceling with like the Batgirl movie, for instance, is movies that they had originally just exclusively made for HBO Max. Like they're not doing that anymore. No more mid-budget just for HBO Max. They're just doing theatrical films now. And that's basically what Todd Phillips' plan always was. Like this was always going to be a theatrical Joker 2 movie. All the DC Black Label stuff that he might wind up doing in the future. That's all intended for a theatrical release. But what'll happen is, is I'll do a separate video if they make any more big announcements about the future of DC films, if they make any other big plans, because they're still planning on hiring themselves sort of their own version of a Kevin Feige figure to lead everything. There's a couple of the big trailers and a couple of the big announcements that just happened. I'll try to do videos for everything as quickly as possible. 
Everyone click here to learn about what's going on with them ending The Flash, canceling the Batgirl movie, and click here for my new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer video in Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.